Well, good evening, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. That's right. Today I have two and a half boxes for you. I should only have two boxes, but uh, I'll explain why a half box is here. It's kind of aggravating. The only good thing about it is I get to share these books with you. Guys, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And this is a live CGC unboxing, like I said. My friends, if you're new here, if you're new to grading, CGC grading, um, that's what we collectors do nowadays, we comic book collectors. When we have comics we want to slab, to uh, encase into, into, into plastic slabs such as this, uh, to protect them, also to uh, garner a grade on them. So we know the exact value of our books. Um, by knowing the grade, you can figure out the value, right? That's what we do here. These are not my books, by the way. These belong to all of my clients. Um, who has time to do their own books? I certainly don't. Actually, that's not true. I got about seven books over there right now of my own, which is remarkable, by the way. And those should be coming back in the next two weeks or so. Well, guys, this year box, this first box, there's a story that goes along to it. But first, let me show you the books, and then I'll tell you the story. I wasn't going to share the story with you guys today anyways but because this is here now i have to and yes i'm gonna slag on cgc a little bit guys i'm gonna slag on them because i'm kind of fed up okay overhead cam is ready to ready and raring to go oh and by the way guys if you love comic books you love comic book talk comic book banter this is the place for you why don't you hit that subscribe button hit the like button if you do hit the subscribe button the nifty thing is you can communicate with us over on the chat room so you can say hello ask any questions uh, you may have about grading or pressing or the current state of affairs in the world of comic book grading as well oh and by the way today we are going to talk a bit about that cgc announcement of the, po the potential of having a 9.9 .9 pre-screen we're going to talk about that halfway through the show probably so again sit back relax here we go, and I'll come over to the chat room shortly, but let's look at these books first. Here we go. First, we have a great copy of uh, The Dark Knight, number four. These are in no order, guys. I think it's a full set of Dark Knight books. We also have a Dark Knight, number two. I'm going to make sure there's no cracks on these. That's at a 9.6. Let me pull the other ones out here. Okay, we've got a Dark Knight, number three. And this one is in a 9.8. Great to see. Oh, there, was, there it is. And then we have a uh, Dark Knight number one. These are all first printings. And this is in a 9.2. Right there. So we had a full set of Dark Knight, which is great. Then we have a all-new Scary Tales from 1975 Charlton comic in an, in an 8.0. We have a Thanos Quest number one. Haven't seen one of these in a long time. And a 9.8. Another and a 9. Point, uh, not another, number two and a 9.8. And my stack is getting really high, but there's only one more book to go. So what the heck? Here we go. We have a Batman 296. This is a great, this is a great looking book. And uh, yeah, 9.4 white pager. She's a pretty book. I love that Scarecrow cover. That's really quite nice. All right. Okay, so these books are wonderful, aren't they? Well, you know what? These books are fantastic, but they shouldn't have come here. These books were supposed to go directly to my client, Bart, in New York. I've talked about Bart before. And what's really frustrating is I'm not going to show you Bart's address. I'm going to cover this up right here. But this is, this is the invoice that they send. Usually, my address is right here. I'm looking at the sheet right now, and I can tell you it's not my address. It's Bart's address. Yet the books the books are upon us. What's going on? Guys, this is like the fourth time they've done this in the last three months. Extremely frustrating. Extremely frustrating. Let me tell you a tale about Bart. So Bart sends me books quite regularly. I ship books off to CGC for him quite regularly. And... Um, Back in November, November, a box of his books were going to be returned to him, but they messed up and the books were returned to me here in Oshawa. So I contacted CGC, of course. They said, yeah, no problem. 
I said, can I just ship the books back? He's in New York. Can I just like ship the books back to him and then bill you for, uh, for my FedEx? He said, no, no, no. Which, which I've done in the past, by the way, when they have screwed up like this in the past. They said, no, we want the book to come back. We want the box of books to come back to us at CGC. So fine. They sent me a shipping label. Off the books went. This is November. Okay. Middle November. Weeks go by. Christmas goes by. I said, I'm going to give Bart a call and see what's going on. And, and in fact, Robert in California's books, this, this also his books were also screwed up this way too. So anyways... <clears throat> I contacted them and they said, oh, those books uh, are still here. I said, wait, I forwarded those books back to you a month ago. How come you, he should have had these books a month ago? Why are they still in your receiving? Oh, well, Kevin, these books require uh, to all be reslabbed. Why? Oh, well, they were all kind of scuffed up and scratched and they come back to us. So, okay, so on the computer I go, I had to do a whole mechanical error form. I had to plunk in every single certification number, all 27 of them. <clears throat> I did that, and then, you know, I waited another two weeks or so. I phoned to see where the books are. They still haven't shipped out. Like, what the hell's the holdup, guys? Oh, they're going to go out soon. Next day, I get an email saying, hello, uh, one of the books in this order was damaged. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So then I look at the book. I go home, and I check the order, and sure enough, it was those same books. One of the books, when they were reslabbing it, they damaged one of the books. And they offered a price for the book. The price was about 80% less than the book's valued at. So I wrote back and kind of complained a bit. They, they increased their offer. And then they finally, and then Bart said, okay, fine. And we're going to settle with that. Anyways, why am I telling you this? This has gone on. This, that's, this, that's the, that was the first. There was a second and a third with Robert. And this is now the fourth in three months of this nonsense. And the real, real pisser about this is... <laughs> I attach a sheet to the, to, the, to, the, to the submission form indicating to CGC these are to be directly returned to the client. Like I put a giant sheet with highlighting. It's like bold. And they still, and then you look at the invoice, which I just showed you here, and Bart's address is right there. So why the hell are these books here? What's frustrating about this is Bart paid to have it shipped directly to him using CGC's in-house FedEx. What's irritating to me is that now I have been billed through my FedEx account for this, this bo box sent an error. So, oh, they'll take care of it. Yeah, they're going to take care of it. But you know what? I have to go and I have to email customer service again. Got to wait 24 hours for a response. I got to prove to them that, that I was billed. I have to ask to have the, the books returned to Bart. Hour, hour and a half of my time gone again because of some incompetent bozo in their shipping department who can't read the goddamn invoice. Pardon my French. I'm just very angry about this now. See, as I talked, I got angrier. And it's just so frustrating. <clears throat> so people, <laughs> if you wonder why... It, this is a lot of work, guys. The CG thing, thing is a lot of work. So if, make sure you're nice to your CGC submitter, whether it's a local comic book shop or your local presser, whoever. Whoever's submitting books to CGC for you, I'm sure they're also encountering these types of mishaps, uh, silly uh, problems that should not be occurring. Give them a nice... Tell, tell them thank you for doing that for them because I tell you... Um, I hear... I get people writing me letters saying, you know... Uh, why are we, should we are we paying for the CGC or is that included with your shipping? Well, guys, it's a lot of work. You know, you can't expect people to do this type of thing for for free. It's 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 a real a real headache. It's a real headache, um, especially when this nonsense happens. Um, and I and I I'm yelling at you guys. I'm going to yell at CGC tomorrow. I guarantee. But I don't understand why why this has to keep happening over and over and over and over. And they don't they don't give me any any solutions to this, right? The crazy thing is, his address is right there. I don't, I don't understand how they screw that up. Nice bunch of books there. So congratulations, Bart. We'll get these back to you hopefully in about a week or so. It's going to take them probably three or four days to get me a shipping label. But this time, these books are not going back to CGC. They're gonna, I'm going to get a shipping label from them to ship them directly to him in New York. This is not, we're not playing that three-month game ever again. All right, enough of that. Let's go to the chat room so I can cool off a little bit. Um, chat window. Here we go. Let's see who's here. John's here. How you doing, John? Brian's here. How you doing, Brian? A ranger for collectors in the house. How you doing? Let's go. Need to see some of my books this round. Hopefully. Dave says, unboxing video. It must be Tuesday. Yes, you're getting used to it, eh? This Tuesday night tradition. 
A Ranger Ford collector says, so what CGC is saying, we don't grade your books fairly unless you pay for it. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Moneyball's in the house. How you doing, Moneyball? Robert N's here. Good evening, Kevin and chat. Uh, Astro says, good evening, all. That time again. Yes, it is. Frank's wondering if his books are here, I'm sure. Yes, he's asking that. PhD a noob. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hi, Kevin. Hope all is well. Um, you know, I just had to let it all out, guys. I had to let it all out, PhD noob. Thank goodness you're here. You are a PhD after all. Uh, just finished reading Dark Knight Returns again. There you go. Perfect timing. Brad's here. How you doing, Brad? Adam's also here. What's up? Astro says, we appreciate you. you know, I Listen, guys, I know you do. My, my customers are fantastic. Uh, you guys are awesome. I have nothing but amazing clients that always, always are very, very thankful for the work. They're always very appreciative, and I know that. I'm not saying anything. But I got a couple of emails the last couple of weeks from people, not even from around here, asking about, you know, should I pay my local com my comic stores asking for me to pay extra for the CGC and he he laid out the pricing the pricing looked fair to me and I'm like yeah man he's doing all the work you know uh, if this type of nonsense occurs I mean listen if you have a if someone is submitting your books for you and this kind of nonsense occurs they should be taking care of it for you as well right they shouldn't just say oh that's it too bad right it's a part of the deal I get it you know um I'm gonna really have it out with them tomorrow though that's for sure um. Because it can't keep happening. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I, I have an idea how to solve it. We'll see what they say. Um, CGC cash grabbing crook. Sorry, had to. <laughs> Brian's okay. Brian, I feel for you and Bart, Doc. Yeah, I feel bad for Bart too. He's been waiting since November for 27 of his books. And then they destroyed one of his books. You know, that's the frustrating thing. Luis Mendoza is here. Yo, 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 what's up, Doc? Luis, how are you, my friend? Craig says, yet CGC is still better than the rest. LOL. Yeah, well, <sighs> you know what? Who knows? I, honestly, guys, could this happen with the other guy? Well, the other guy mailed my stuff to the complete. At least these books came back to me. They didn't go to some other person's house like C CBCS did to me, right? So this next one has, I think, some pre-screens in it because I see some books that were, some loose books here. Boom. Oh. When I see a box like that, raw comics, raw books inside, you kind of know there's probably a pre-screen order in here. So I'll put that down there. Although, oh yeah. We start off with a 9.2 copy. Now, I don't think this is a part of the pre-screen. A 9.2 copy of Dark Horse Presents number 36. When we're done this box, we'll talk about the 9.9. .9. Uh, and I, I want to hear your thoughts on the whole 9.9 .9 pre-screening. Most people I talk to are very livid about it. They're very upset about it. But I'm not going to talk about it right now. The, the comments should be showing. Oh, the comics aren't showing. There you go. Oh, that's not it either. There it is, right there. Boop. There you go. But yeah, a lot. most people are quite upset about it. We'll talk about it when we're done this box. Okay, so there you go. Dark Horse Presents. Then we have an uh, Avengers Annual number 10 and an 8.5. We have also a Dark Horse Presents... Uh, 36, a different copy. The variant cover is a 9.8. All right, there's the modern invoice. We also have a copy of, I love, I love this cover. I love this cover. Superboy number nine in a 9.8. I had a copy at the shop a long time ago and I sold it to the real Hyperion. And I thought it was a 9.6, possibly a 9.8. Had I known it to be a 9.8, I probably would have sold it to you, James. Sorry, but I did. And you got a 9.8, so I'm happy. But this is a different copy here. I just love that, that uh, cover. We have an Amazing Fantasy 15 and a 9.0. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's a reprint. Sorry, guys. Did I get you excited there? We also have a 9.8 copy of Spawn number one. Right there. If you're just getting here now, guys, hit that subscribe button. Do me that favor and the like button too. It does help with my analytics. We got a 9.6 copy of Silver Surfer uh, Volume 2, number one. Right there. Okay, now I think we're jumping into the uh, pre-screens. Uh, we got about six pre-screens, it says here. We got a bunch of pre-screens. Let me let me clean this uh, this 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 order up here. I'll go over to the chat while I'm talking, you guys. Um, 
Roger says, sent you my first ever submission in October. Getting excited to see what we got. Roger, there, I am shipping out October orders like crazy. Um, I've got another big, I sent out a huge box last week, two huge boxes last week. Working on another box right now, and we'll probably be sending it October orders out for next week or so, and then we're going to jump into November um, very soon. Again, Nipur is out on vacay right now. She's back uh, next Friday, I believe. Uh, and then we'll get right back at it. When she gets back, I'm going to really start, ha we're going to start hammering them out. Um, we haven't been, we haven't been like working like eight hour shifts over there. You know what I mean? Like we've been, we've been taking it pretty, we were quite happy with the three month turnaround, to be honest. We kind of, kind of eased up a little bit, but, um, now that she's gone for that, uh, for that two week break vacation, it's going to bring us back a little bit. So we'll probably turn up the speed a little bit work some extra hours and get caught back up again. We'll try to maintain that three month turnaround. It's actually a great time to get your books in too. But uh, Roger, thanks so much for your patience. And yeah, your books are gonna be worked on very, very soon. Oh, they're probably already done actually. Uh, bad hombre, my comments are not showing. Your comments are not showing. Well, I see your comment right there. Craig Smith, PGX lost my books and wouldn't pay me back until I got YouTubers involved. CBCS, I had a supplier account. Now that was an eye opener. No longer use them at all, just CGs. You see, guys, everybody's had experiences. I, I've always found with CGC, um, every year and a half to a year, there's always some kind of a glitch. Something starts screwing up over there. And this has been my my new glitch. Like last year, it was the uh, cracked slabs. This year, it's the sh shipping, the books being shipped to the wrong address. Um, and again, when I say wrong address, being shipped back to me. Which is, uh, which is the wrong address, being shipped back to me. Um, they've never shipped a, uh, a bunch of books out to, uh, you know, to another person's house. My God, imagine that. Okay, uh, I think these are, these I think are, uh, are um, Bo Mr. Bowman, I think these are your books, I think. Uh, Void Rival number one came back a 9.8. Another one here came back a 9.8. I think these are yours. We have a Star Wars uh, number 68. Uh, the direct copy. This came back um, in a 9.4 white pager. Star Wars Tales uh, number 23. Wow, that's a sharp looking book. And a 9.8. Right there. Wedge and Tillies. See, that I think was a lost opportunity for Star. That'd be a great conversation to have. The the missed the missed opportunity to 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 veer off on some Wedge and Tillies adventures. Um, Star Wars number 24, also in a 9.8. And then a Star Wars number nine in a nine point eight. I like the nine point eights, boy. They just make my they they make my they make, they make me happy. When things don't work, they make me happy. All right. We have a Transformers number one, the Betra, Betram, sorry, the Bertram variant cover in a nine point eight. This one's pretty cool. My screen's too small. This is kind of a hologram hollow hollow cover so it's kind of hard to see but it's pretty sick looking let's see if i can kind of angle it up and get you to see that a little better right there all right oh i love it 9.8 copy of web of spider number one and a very sick and a very very sick um where is it right there and a very sick uh i love that love it is that yours, Frank? Probably, because you like those uh, covers. Love that. Wow, it looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. Oh. All right, what else we got? Um, a 9.8 copy of Venom number 150 right there. These look so familiar. They're not staying at CGC too long. The moderns are coming back pretty quick. The, vi the vintage books are a little longer than usual. We got a 9.6 copy of uh, Secret Wars number eight. I'll put that over there so you can see it a bit better. I'm going to stack these books so we can. Um... All right, 
Let's see here. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm gonna. Tr I'm, okay. I'll, I'll take these off while I um, while I bag them. I'll go back to the chat room and answer your questions if you have any. Um, Anthony Wheeler says, I view CGC and CBCS both grade the same, same turnaround time, same customer serve, but CBCS cases are better. Laugh out loud. Yeah, don't nothing to laugh about. A lot of people do believe the, CG, the, the CBCS cases are stronger. When I first saw these CGC cases, I was pretty impressed. But yeah, when you hold a CBCS slab, they're, um, they're sturdier. I'm going to tell you, Doing CPR is a lot easier on one of these babies. The, C the CBCS slabs are a real son of a gun to open up. So if that's a deterring factor for those criminals out there, maybe that's a, a good thing to look at. Um, Rob Bins says, Kevin, have the slabs changed at all? Or was this batch graded before the scandal? Um, they could have been graded before the scandal. I don't know. Uh, these, these ones seem better than the ones I had last week. That's for sure. Whoop. <clears throat> Where am I going here? Frank says, those are mine, I think. Okay. Well, soon, no, soon enough. Craig says, Anthony Wheeler, CBCS is better on a lot of things. The customer service stinks bad. Look, the way I look at it, as far as customer service goes, where your comics are concerned, as long as, um, when I phone your number, when I phone you, because I want to ask you a question about my comics that are at your facility, and I don't get a hold of somebody at that facility or someone who can get in touch with that facility immediately, I have a real hard time with that. So I don't know. I've heard that CBCS uses um, overseas customer you know, support. You know, I'm not calling to talk to somebody who can barely speak English or even knows what a comic book is. You know, heck with that nonsense. All I know is when I call CGC customer service, I'm I usually get an answer on the phone pretty quick. Only once was I on the phone waiting a long, long time. Usually after a con season, they're very busy. But most of the time when I phone, someone answers within about two or three minutes, which is great. And and they've been really, customer service has been actually really, really quite good. I'm not complaining about customer service at all. They, they, they do what they need to do. Um... It's just these, these silly mistakes, you know, again, like I'm trying to run a business here and I, when I have to now spend an hour and a half dealing with this, that's me an hour and a half not doing other things. I have to sit on my computer, go to the phone. I can't focus on other things. That's what drives me really crazy. And they have no concern for that. And what's really a slap in the face is it just happened. Like I just, I just was reimbursed like not even a week ago for the other boxes. And then they sent another box the exact same way. You know, anyways, that, that's the frustrating thing. So CBCS, um, the customer service thing is really, really important to me. I need to talk to somebody. I need to talk to somebody. That's it. Um, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. Where is it? Uh, okay, let's go to, let's go on and I will continue with the conversation. We have a Spider-Man and Wolverine, uh, number one, uh, again, custom label. So probably is yours, Frank, in a 9.4. Uh, all right. Brian says, yep, those are mine. Good. Star Wars Tales are mine. Excellent. Brian Bowman, nice books. They are, eh, Craig? Um, thanks, Craig Smith. John, li liking the new screen format? Good full. Good form? Good full? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying different things. And, and then you'll notice when I do my interviews, and tomorrow I have another interview, by the way, guys, with Brian Healer from Whitby. He is the editor of uh, Ven uh, Toy Ventures Magazine and the host over at Toy Venture, the Toy Venture um, uh, YouTube channel. Guys, you want to jump in? 45 minutes to an hour of nostalgia, my friends. He's going to be bringing some old toys from the 70s and 80s, maybe a little bit earlier too. So if you are uh, a child of that period, you want to go back in time, make sure you come by tomorrow at 8.30 for that. So Wednesday show, because he was unavailable for, thir for Thursday. And I am working on some other interviews. I got some great people lined up some you're gonna know right off the bat some you might not uh but yeah we'll go from there all right next um craig i love the transformers cover yeah it's quite nice flow ah, thanks buddy thanks john star screen uh, brian frank and my books are mixed together but at least they got sent to the right that's right <laughs> no it's not too soon it's true 
again, it's only happened with, to my some of my American orders for some reason. And listen, I've been having Bart's books sent back to his place with no problems for years. And this is last three boxes have for some reason had an issue. Fix the screen, Kev. Oh, no, it's, it's all good now, right? Um, the P-Man's here. How you doing, Troy? All right, let's keep going. We have a Wolverine number one. That they really crucified for some reason. They didn't get really mean on this, but this is an 8.5. It's the second 8.5 I've gotten on this one. I have to look at that closer, but I just, yeah. Okay, anyways, 8.5. Next, we have a 9.8 copy of Silk number one. We've got a Wolverine uh, Presents, sorry, Marvel, Marvel Comics Presents 72 and a 9.6 there oh this is a nice one uh hulk and wolf hulk versus wolverine number one no number really number one i guess in a 9.8 that's really nice that's a great grade on that one we have a 9.8 copy of daredevil 181 we had two of these at the last unboxing both received a 9.8 as well which is great and then we have we got here we have forgotten realms number one variant cover uh in a 9.8 my head is too small i just want to get out of there i want to be more focused on the books i mean i could always go like this do you like this or do you prefer do you prefer this do you prefer this this beautiful face or do you want to see the text i wasn't sure what you'd prefer if i try that instead but I'm trying different things. And last but not least from this box, and I still have one more full box to share with you, 9.8 copy, Extreme Venomverse, number four, the Okazaki, Okazaki variant cover in a 9.8. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I'll pack these babies up. That's weird. Um, where is it? The chat. Where's my chat? There it is. Chat window. There it is. Good. Okay. Right back to there. Um, your head is too small. I love the silk book. I saw one today. I really want to get a copy. Are they that? Are they crazy money? Or are they not bad? Uh, bad ombre, I'll text you info. Okay, no problem. That's weird that it's not working. I like the spooky new intro music. I've always had that jive turkey. I've always had that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to come up with a new one at some point. Only so much time in the day. Um, Craig says, nice forgotten realms book. Another FR fan out there in the com. Oh, yeah. That's the great thing about this, these shows. You get to see other people's uh, loves and likes and interests and, uh, Oftentimes, they match with your own, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, the modern books you currently have for me, the CGC form says pre-screen. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we got to talk after. I'm not sure. I forget, I forget Mike. I'm sorry. We got to talk later about that. Um, uh, Coriander Racer. Kevin, I made it to this one. You are crushing it, my friend. Keep doing what you are doing. I'm trying. I've always wanted to do one-on-one -on -one with guests, so I'm going to. And I'm also going to probably end up having some of you guys on here. I'm going to have like a, uh, you know, profile on on, on 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 some of you viewers, the collectors. You know, like I'll ask some of you guys to come on and, and show off some of your books, maybe get your origin story. And um, yeah, if you don't mind being on camera, uh, you know, one night we'll do that. So I might reach out to some of you and see if you're interested or if you would like to and you want to just let me know, I can try to schedule you in because I'm not going to be able to have you know, featured guests every single week. That's going to be hard to schedule. Although I have a couple of, I think, very exciting, I don't want to say anything yet. Until I'm talking to somebody tomorrow and I'll confirm that and then I'll let you guys know uh, maybe tomorrow night or, or, or next Tuesday, but it's going to be a good one. Um, what's your favorite era of books to work on? Mine would be, Anthony, uh, yeah, I like... I like Silver Age, obviously, and Golden Age. I, well, okay, I'm going to say all of them, right? 
But if I had to pick one, gold and silver, bronze, probably silver age. I find they, they just respond really well. The paper is really uh, forgiving and accepting of the work we do. Um, I think second would probably be, um, I like working on the bronze age stuff, you know, uh, the 1970s. They, they tend to really respond well to pressing as also. And uh, yeah, and then golden age. The, the very last thing, modern. modern. I hate working on modern books. They're so, I'll tell you guys, to be honest, and, and I don't know if other pressers would agree with me on if any other pressers are watching right now. I find modern books, like the the more the newer books, to be more of a pain in the ass to work on than than the older stuff. They're very it's almost like, like they're not even paper. It's almost like they're uh it's plastic sometimes. So you gotta be really careful. The inks are uh it's just they're just a whole other animal, right? So yeah, they're my they're my least favorite moderns. But if I had to pick one I had to stick to and only work on silver. Silver age uh jive turkey i thought it was always the beer commercial guitar jam no that's for the one-on-one -on -one. that's for the one-on-one -on -one. if you watch tomorrow it'll be the beer commercial one <laughs> bow, 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 that one right um bad ombre but it does not specify nine eight please pre-screen nine eight not nine nine i don't think i put nine nine on it i don't think you can do nine nine uh, are you being silly? Are you being facetious here? Are you trying to pull my leg here? Uh, I like both screens, but the old style shows the books better and the ladies can see your face. <laughs> yeah, because John, how many, all the ladies that are in the house right now, 46 viewers right now, how many of you are women? My wife doesn't even watch for crying out loud. She sees me enough. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to watch. All right, let me just fix these, ba these books up here, guys, and we'll get right, we're going to get to our conversation that everyone wants to talk about. 9.9 .9. and Mike's kind of alluding to it a little bit link both messages <laughs> oh. Free screen but it does not specify 98 oh I, I, I'm sure it says 98 yeah <clears throat> all right okay well my question to you is is it is i don't, I don't think nine nine is even available on there yet is it? it better not be i could do it right now and find out uh but i'm pretty sure it doesn't if you give me one second i can go check it right now hold on i'll do that right now where's my uh screen here there we go i'll, I'll go to cgc's website and check i don't believe a nine nine is available wwcgc I'll go over here and I'll pretend I'm doing a new order. Sign in. I'll sign in there. I wish I could show you this. Let's see if I can show I'll see if I can show you this. Hold on. Um, here. And then dealer home. And then submission. Online submissions. Start new submission. Okay. Can I bring this over here? Can it? Will it work? This is kind of it here. I don't know if I can get you to fit it all in here. Okay. So I'm going to go comic. This is not going to be perfect, guys, but just give me a second here. I'll go comic, and then regular submission, mail in or drop off, grading. Yeah, 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 agree. Modern, and then here's the pre-screen. Okay, here's the pre-screen right here. No, 9.8 is the max right there. There's no 9.9. .9. There's no 9.9, .9, so don't worry about that. It's 9.8, Okay. Anyway, that's all I wanted to check. All right, so let's talk about it. Really quick, guys, let's talk about this. We're now talking about this whole, the, the possibility of, of uh, CGC introducing a 9.9 .9 pre-screen. Now, I have a real problem with this. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, be, I'll tell you what I think. And then, of course, you're all very welcome to make your comments. In fact, I encourage you to comment uh, whether you're for it or against it. But this is my reasoning. CGC came out on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the scene, what, 23 years ago, something like that. And they established early on, early on, and being the first ones at it, that 9.8 was kind of the epitome, the, the, the grade that you're looking for. This is the grade, this is the highest grade we're going to give out consistently. And if we're going to give out a 9.9, .9, or if we're going to give out a 10, that is going to be for a very special, for very special books, books that are, you know, extremely amazing you know whatever okay they established that 23 years ago with well, 20, 20 24 years ago whatever it is 
You can't, a quarter of a century later, or almost a quarter of a century later, decide you want to start adding a 9.9 prescreen. Understand that in the last 24 years, other collectors have paid huge premiums for 9.8 and have paid crazy premiums, crazy premiums for 9.9s and the, 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 the odd 10, right? Let's be honest. We understand as collectors and people that send in the CGC that 9.8 is what we're pretty much looking for. And, and, and for books that kind of go up to like, you know, 2000, 2005, 9.9s and 10s are pretty, pretty, pretty rare. Okay. Now we all know that current books, modern books that we're seeing. Yeah, we can get, we can get the odd uh, 9.9, the odd 10. We've seen them here on my show. Right for really new books or you know certain chromium covers or or whatever those variant certain variant books whatever hollow hollow covers we see those but that's in the last five or so years but books from the silver age the golden age the bronze age uh, you know uh, the the early modern age that's not a common thing you've established that's not a common thing and thousands upon thousands of these books have already been graded so what now we're going to take our nine eights and send them back in to get regraded as potential 9.9s i was always under the impression i was guys i was always under the impression that when we send books to cgc that we were going to get well that they were going to review those books right review those books you know what that is you know review the books and the potential of getting a 9.9 was there not well, we're gonna we're gonna grade the book, and if it's really nice, we're gonna give you a nine eight. Although it could have been a nine point nine if we spent another three minutes looking at it. That's that's about that's, that's hogwash. That's ridiculous. So this whole notion of adding a nine point nine pre screen to me, they can't just offer that and then not give out the nine point nines. They're gonna give out the nine point nines, and if they do that, they're gonna flood the market, and all the nine point eights we have are gonna drop in value as the nine point nines start filling up the census, start kind of percolating into the into the ether and into into the auction houses and what have you. Very, very, in my opinion, I don't know if it's unethical. Is that, is that is it unethical to do that? I don't think it's unethical to do it. I just don't think it's good for the hobby because they've already established a norm. <clears throat> If they want to do 9.9 pre-screens for books from, say, 2020 and up, no problem. No problem. That's fine. For these ultra-modern books, 2015 even. I don't care. Maybe that's, no, that might be even too far long ago. Maybe 2020 and up, maybe I'd be okay with that. But to do a two thousand, to do like a 9.9 pre-screen on books from the 80s, from the, from the early aughts, from the seven, no, forget that. You, you guys have already established those grades are unattainable. You know, I, I always think and I always tell people when I look at a really high grade book, I, I never say, yeah, nine, eight for sure. I always say nine, six, nine, eight, nine, six, nine, eight, right? Sometimes it's it's almost impossible to differentiate a nine, six to a nine, eight, I, I think. Um, so, you know, and I've seen some books that are absolutely like 100% flawless. There probably should be a 9.9 or should be a 10 and they don't get those grades. They get the 9.8. So anyways, yeah, I don't think it's right. I think they've already established a norm and they should, they, they've, they've, they, you know, past practice. This is what we've done and they should continue doing that. And even CBCS uh, has followed suit with that. They don't do like the 9.9 .9 nonsense either. They've kind of followed CGC's lead, right? So yeah. Got a real problem with it. What do you guys think? Let's go and see what you guys think about this. Um, so Anthony Wheeler kind of echoes what I said. I, I see them only doing a 9.9 .9 pre-screen on modern books and only, but they need to change the range modern starting from there. We, see, I don't even think, I think 2000 is too early. I, I think just too many books have already been graded. You know, do you know what I mean? That's the problem. Too many books have already been graded. Bad ombre, it's a scam. Modern 9.9 will become the new 9.8 to artificially increase prices and auctions. 100%. I'm waiting for a 10, a 10 point. They might as well. If you're going to do a 9.9 .9 pre-screen, you might as well do a 10. But if you're going to start doing that, you've got to do it on books that start from today. We're, we're now implementing this new 9 point. No, we're now implementing a 9.9 .9 and 10 point uh, pre-screen for books that that have been, you know, that were released in 2024. We're starting that as of now. Any other book, you know, from previous years is not eligible for the pre-screen. That's it. Now, if you 
want to take a book and crack it and send it in and try to get the nut. That's up to you. You know what I mean? On your older books, uh, maybe they'll be more apt to do that, but they shouldn't. I, I still think that they shouldn't, um, that they should not uh, change the way they've been grading so far. The, 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 the um, what's the word I'm looking for? They shouldn't change the, um, their guidelines, you know, their cutoffs. They should, they should keep it the way it is because it's too late, man. You've been doing this for over 20 years. You can't just change it all of a sudden willy-nilly because you want to make some extra money. Here's an idea. Start offering some DC uh, custom labels. There you go. There's some extra money in your pocket. Offer some more, uh, more, more. Uh, I don't know, something else. Do, do other things. Add some security features to your slabs that, char- that cost a little bit more. <laughs> People might pay the extra 100 bucks if they know for sure it's got a proper security security feature. God knows you could have used that if this last year or two years or 10 years. Um, Peter G, CGC pre-screen is the minimum grade you choose and includes all grades above. Technically, that already includes, that's right, it should already include a 9.9 and 10, Peter, but they have, they, they don't give those grades out. They don't give those grades out. Like I said, in all the years and all the thousands of books I've sent in, only one has come back a 9.9. I mean, books from the, earlier from the from the bronze age modern bronze right i've gotten 9.9 and 10s for modern books we've seen it all the time but not from older books craig smith uh oh comic doctor's angry again maybe a name change is due the angry comic that's not a bad that's a good name the angry comic presser the only problem is you might think oh and then rip your butt guy son of a those buggers you know you're working on working on your book and all of a sudden you hear something like this you know like oh no, no, i'm the angry, angry comic presser oh that was a hulk 181 no it's just paper but i mean you know what i mean maybe not a good name eh? but it sounds good but my, maybe in practicality it's not a good idea rob says i'm of the thinking that if there are nine nines are out there that are stuck in a nine eight slabs they should be re-slabbed oh my god I get it. You, sure. But they should have done that 25 years ago or 23 years ago or whatever. Whenever the hell they open. Not now. Not after we've already established that nine eights are kind of the epitome. You know what I mean? Like, well, so that means I got to take every single one of my nine eight slabs and send them back. That's what they want. They want us to send back those slabs. They want us to send back the CGC slabs. Forget that. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, it's funny because this kind of reminds me, you know, CGC used to say that you should re-slab your books every five years. Was that every five years? Is that right? From some of you old guys like me who've been doing this for a while. Is it, was it five years? They say the micro chamber paper only has a life, uh, life expectancy of five years to neutralize the acids in the paper. And they say they recommend that your book should be re-slabbed every five years anyway. Who the hell does that? Very few people re-slab their collections. So maybe this is a way of forcing their hands saying, well, you can, you can re-slab your collection and you might actually get a 9.9. But I, I still don't. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. Um, D. Hyde says, Ultra modern make more sense. The way they are made make it easier for higher grades. Yeah, they're, that I would have no problem with. Moving from this year forward, sure. And if you want to flood the market with 9.9s of the most recent Spider-Man books, the most recent Batman books, so be it. But at least the, the hobby, the collectors, the community will know that. They know, just like we know... What to we know that they tend to grade Golden Age books a little little kinder than they would a modern book, right? We know that we have this understanding of that, and and if all of a sudden the current books are are graded to that standard, that's okay, one hundred percent okay, but not on books from say two thousand and twenty and earlier. They'll leave those alone. You've already established that. It's done. Um. <clears throat> Brian says, before they do anything, they need to start consistently providing greater notes for 9, 6, and 9, 8. I struggle to see a consistent difference between some 9, 6s, and 9, 8s. I agree. There should be greater notes with every single book. Every single book. I've always had a problem with that. It's a 9, 8. Well, why is it not a 9, 9? Why is it not a 10? Right? Um, you know? Oh, then, there, then there's that. Uh, what's that company that CGC uses? Uh, is it C- no, it's not CGC. It's the auction houses. They'll give you a book like... They'll have your book like this, and they'll put a sticker on the book. Oh, it's a 9.6, but oh, it's a nice-looking book. It, it could be a 9.8. It's one of those stickers you pay like, what, 50 bucks for them to stick a sticker on there? Who knows that company? I know my buddy Roy uses them when he when he goes on, like, uh, Comic Link. 
they, they, they look at your books and they charge you a little bit of money and they, they say, yeah, the book could be better. The, could, the, the book presents better than this. It's an eight zero, but it presents like a nine. What's that company called? I forget. C something, C V or something. Um, but yeah, you're right, Brian. They should for 100%, 100% have um, uh, graders notes for every single grade. Maybe, you know, nine, eight, maybe not. But nine six and down one hundred percent, because I still think not. I think a lot of nine eights could could very well be nine nines and tens. To be quite honest, um, if they're looking for defects, Jive Turkey says it makes no sense that that extra time looking at a box book will will increase a grade. What did they see to drop it to a nine eight to begin with? Exactly, exactly, my friend. Brian says I also struggled to see the difference between some nine 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 eights and nine nines. Yes. Um, you know, Brian Bowman uh, need more transparency around grading, but won't happen because it's too subjective and inconsistent. Well, look, I, I had this conversation with, um, uh, with, uh, oh my gosh, with Swagalas last week about that that AF fifty was it AF fifty? No, ASM one that was a nine eight. It was a nine six. It became a nine eight. Oh, it was CPR. I call bullshit on that. They might have said it was a CPR. They might have said that ASM. Uh, one was a CPR. They might have paid for it to be a CPR. That wasn't a CPR. That was, what is it? What is the pressing cost? Oh, it's whatever thousands of dollars. There you go. That's all it was. You think? You think? I would assume. I would assume it was CCS or CGC comic pressing that did. The, I would assume that. I don't know that for sure, but I would assume it was them that did the press on that and. Uh, yeah, don't don't think for a second there weren't conversations leading up to that, right? And if you think that, and I don't care if I get in trouble for this, I, I just don't believe they even pressed it. I don't believe they pressed it. I think that they looked at it and they said, this book's a 9.6, but you know what? It's nice enough that we could give it a 9.8. And because I don't think they're going to put a 9.6 uh, ASM1 of that value. Why would you put that book in a press and risk, even risk, playing with it just put the damn thing into a slab and be done with it i just don't buy it i don't buy it i call bullshit on that one what do you think i don't think they did i think they paid for it they paid for the grade that's what i'm trying to say they paid for the grade and i think it was midtown comics had that the action comics number one the same thing or they went from like an eight five to a nine i think highest in the census yeah sure sure they, they pressed it sure they did i don't believe they pressed any of that stuff they got paid. They got paid a good sum of money, and they put they did they paid for the nine the nine uh, sorry the eight five to become a nine. Am I cynical? I don't know. I think I'm just being realistic here. Um, where am I? Where am I here? Um, Brian says I also okay. No, Brian says need more transparency. We said that already. Nine nine certainly is a cash grab. I think it will, will apply primarily to new large modern comics that are currently being sent for a nine eight pre screen. I hope so. Anthony says, I would love DC custom labels. I have tons of DC books that need them. There you go. And I hear that all the time. Easy money right there. Some people are worried uh, this will decrease the value of 9.8s, but it seems to me it should devalue 9.9s if the difference is only perceptible if you pay for a pre-screen. It is not a real difference. I think that I think that the 9.8s will decrease in value. I think the 9.9s will also decrease in value because there'll be more of them. And then maybe the 10s will become the new 9.9s. I don't know. But I think it's going it's to have an effect across the board, 100%. Don't get me wrong. 9.8s will still be sought after. But if, if they're going to start pumping out 9.9s, because actually, if you think about it, look at look at a, look at a comic book like or the magazine, the Batman Damned magazine. Remember that came out a few years ago, had Bat Schlong on there. Remember that one? Those suckers, everybody was getting tens on those tens, 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 nine, 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 nine point nine, nine point nine, nine point nine, ten. That they were worth nothing. They were worth nothing because everybody was getting them. It wasn't anything special to have a ten point zero Batman Damned. Everybody had them. That's what I'm saying. When you normalize it, where everybody was getting books like that, that's fine. And again. I think again, and I hope CGC uses their common sense here, and they probably will. I think they're getting a lot of flack for this. I think they're hearing a lot of resistance to this. But common sense, common sense to me is okay, this will be this will apply to, and they, they should do a ten, not only a 9.9 .9 pre screen, they should do a 10 point a 10 point pre screen as well for books 
that are that are published from like 2024 and up. If you want to go 2020, fine. Go back four years. Um, you know, from 2020 and up, you can do 10 point pre uh, 10 point pre screen. Sure, why not? Why not? That's fine, right? We'll see. Um, Bad Aubrey, it was seven years, I believe. Seven years of what? Uh, my my memory is bad. Uh, a ranger for collectors says, "I if we would just stop sending in books for ninety days, you're the second person who said that to me today. <laughs> you're the second person who said that to me today." And, and bad ombre repeats it. I'm going to tell you, nobody nobody has contacted me and said, "Kevin, don't send my books." Well, that's not true. One person did, but then he called back and said, "I go ahead and send them," but but no one else. Like everyone's like, "Send, send, send." They, they're they're fine. So. There it is. Marco says, if they start using the whole scale, they need to say, one, any pre-2024 book max grade is a 9.8. Two, be able to show us what the actual difference is between 9, 6, and 10. And three, grading notes always. Well, I think it's too late to, to say max grade on pre-2024 books is 9.8 because they already have many samples out there of 9.9s and 10s. So you can't say 9.8 is the max now. All they can do is keep keep the standards the same for books that are previously graded before 2020, like I said, 2024. I'm okay again with 2020. Hell, I'll be okay with 2018 even. You know, I really don't care because I don't collect a lot of those books, <laughs> right? But it's not, it won't be, it really would not be fair to people that have already got those books in the 9-8 slab, you know? Uh, so yeah, I, I think they to do it proper, it would be from this moment on. They, that, that's the way they should do it. Whether they will do that, I don't know. We're, we're going to see. But again, I, I, this again could also be, uh, I think it was, again, it was uh, um, uh, Swaggle House put out a funny um, meme on his on his Instagram showing that we're already, you know, it's it's almost like a, it's like a, it's like a, a smoke screen. Let's throw out the whole 9.9 .9 controversy to get people stop talking about the slab gate and talk about the 9.9, .9 pre which we're doing right now, right? Is it working? Maybe that's the whole, maybe that's the whole fact. That's possible. Hey, Warren, how's it going? Adam says, I think it's hard to find a 9.8 candidate on current moderns with shipping and printing issues apparent on many, let alone a 9.9. Yeah, that's that's where pressing... I tell people, new to the, people like new clients come in, they go, well, I don't need to have my, my new books pressed. Do I go, sometimes the new books need to press more than the older books do because of the shipping. You're right. It's crazy. Um, oh, thank you. The company is CVA. Uh, uh, thank you, Mike. So what, what that means is a lot of these, these, these auction houses, I believe, I don't know if, I know that Comic Link for sure uses, uh, CVA. Once you have a slab, you can have Z CVA look over your, your slab. And if the book appears to be nice, say your book's at eight, eight, five, and it really shows like higher than eight, five, you get a late, you get this little sticker put on it, a little holographic sticker saying it's been reviewed by CVA. And to their opinion, they think the book could be a nine or a 9.2. Fifty dollars, please. Right. So, anyways, that's that. Uh, Rob bid regarding the ASM one. From my experience, you can't have a nine eight with that size of a tick on the side. Yeah, it, it had a pretty big spine tick on. It's for sure. Mike Mel is this is here. Matt Nelson is friends with a guy at Heritage Auctions. Huge conflict of interest for those big books getting a grade bump. Would it be surprised if there is some money being handed back and forth? Hmm. Really? You think so? <laughs> you know. You don't want to think that, right? You don't want to think that. But it, it is a huge conflict of interest. It is a huge conflict of interest. When your biggest customer is giving you a book like that and you're going to you're going to make them unhappy, you're going to make them happy. And they're paying that thousands upon thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard it's hard to, you know. It seems a little suspect to me. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> I hope everybody's honest, but We've learned in the last month that not everybody is honest. There are people that will actually heat up a slab and crack it open and swap out the inner wells. And if you think just one person was doing that, come on now. Um, bad ombre, seven years to rehold her. Oh, will be, maybe. <laughs> oh, you have seven years? Oh, seven years. Okay, so I said... It, it, it was five years to rehold her. Now that so that ombre has clarified, it was seven years to rehold her. Um, they say every seven years, send your books back to get reholdered. 
Okay, I got a thousand slabs. How much is that going to cost? Yeah, sure, CGC. Brandon says, hopefully getting my Hulk ready one to you soon, man. Looking forward to it, Brandon. JT1192, no notes on non-perfect books is infuriating. I, I saw, was it a, who, a fella, came, oh, it was, um, uh, Pete, Pete came in and saw me. Um, have this, Peter Tran came and saw me in the weekend, brought me a 6.5 copy of ASM 194 for a CPR. Great copy, great, great copy for it. No graders notes. On a 6.5, no graders notes. Come on. Come on now. Uh, Brian, I think you overcomplicate it if you start different grading scales at different eras. But I can't see any other way of doing it, though. I can't, I, without, ripping, without ripping ripping people off and pissing people off, you have no choice. And I think it's not that big of a deal. You know that from this era on, that's the way it's going to be. You know, what they could do, <laughs> and they won't do this, they won't do this, but what they could do is introduce a new label. For modern books, again, going back, they used to, in the, when CGC first opened, the modern books had a red label. Did you know that? Have a look. Look up CGC modern label red, and you'll see the old red labels. That way you would know that these books moving forward co are, are kind of on a different scale than the other books. I know it's confusing, but what else are you going to do? Other than that, don't do it. <laughs> if you're not going to do this, then just don't even offer it. Just leave things, leave, leave well enough alone. Don't. Don't play these games. Um, what you drink in there, boss? A nice glass of uh, Glen Glenlivet 18? I'm drinking a nice glass of water. I'm not a drinker, guys. I don't drink. I drink water and lots of Diet Coke, which I shouldn't drink. I was going to have a Diet Coke tonight, and I, I said no, and I didn't. I chose the, the healthier choice. Uh, what's in the box, Doc? Holy cow, Dave. You're not patient, are you? Okay, let's go on. Moving right along, we have one more box to go. We got 62 of you here. If you're just getting here right now, we've gone through Bart's box, a small box of Bart's books that were directed to the wrong location. Me, they should have went to New York. Those are done. That's the first box we did. Uh, the second box we just finished, and now we're going to do, well, about 20 minutes ago, and now we're going to go to the third box. I like this purse. They put the, they put the uh, forms in the top. Here we go. Let's see what we got, guys. I have no idea. I know there's Venom in there. I know there's Venom books in here. That's all I know. Okay, we start off with a first appearance of Gambit. Where is my overhead cam? There it is. In a 9.2, we have a first appearance of Psylocke in New Mutants Annual number two. Right there. Why is that there? Okay. Ah. We also have a copy of a lot of moderns today, guys. I think we got a Wolverine limited series number one, newsstand edition, and a nine point two. This is a book we see a heck of a lot of here at the sh at the uh, on the show. That's for sure. We've got a Wolverine eighty eight and a nine point six first Deadpool Wolverine cover, I believe. Is that what it says here? Deadpool Weapon X. All right, 9.6. No 9.8s yet. Not like, oh, I spoke too soon. Spider-Man number one in a 9.8, the silver edition. Yes, yes, they printed a hell of a lot of these books. The silver, the gold, the normal version. The one great thing about this book, it's a great book to get a, a, uh, um, to get a uh, Todd McFarlane signature on, right? I mean... You ask Todd, he's a silver marker, a gold marker on this. Looks good. So the book's good for something. Oh, here's one right here. Another 9.8, Spider-Man number one. Here's the version I was talking about, the normal version. What else we have here? We got a Thor Canadian price variant, number 338. It's the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. We also have a copy of another Web of Spider-Man number one, Canadian price variant. Ew, greasy fingers all over. Who the hell put that? Holy cow. Look at my french fries and handle the slabs. Had a couple of greasy fingerprints on there, like from bozos. Anyways, 9.4. 
Canadian price variant right there. Um, 9.6 copy of uh, Spider-Man 20,000. 20,000. 2,099. First appearance of... Oh, uh, it's not the first. The origin of Spider-Man 2,099 right there. And then another one. 296s. What's up with that? There we go. Um, as I pack these away, we'll go back. I got more, guys. Don't go anywhere. Um... <laughs> no 99 screen pre-screens yet brian so a 90, 1999 book gets graded differently from a 2000 book for example at the point where you draw the line it gets ridiculous i think yeah they got to figure that out but yeah essentially yeah so a book from 1999 will be graded differently from a, from from an ultra modern right off the press book if they're going to offer that 9.9 .9. whether you like it or not that's like uh, either do that or don't do anything or don't do anything um, Nucking Futz one says, everybody getting their feathers ruffled over this 9.9 pre-screen. If the standards are the same as before, what difference if there's pre-screening or not? If it's not a 9.9, it's a, well, the problem with that, the problem with that, Nucking Futz, is when Matt Nelson was on that interview with, um, the, the, the oh, West Coast Avengers and 9.9 newsstand, 9.9 .9 newsstand, is he said, the way he phrased it, he says, for an extra fee, I'm paraphrasing, but for an extra fee, we'll we'll look at the book a little longer and make sure it's a 9.9. .9. That that's the problem I have. Right? That's the problem I have. I was always under the impression that they were doing that already. That they were looking at every book with the with the possibility, the potential that that book was going to be a 9.4, 9.6, 9.8, 9.9, whatever, 10, right? But then, having done this for over 10 years, and having now submitted thousands of books, lots of 9.8s come back. But in all those years, only one book coming back in 9.9 .9 just goes to show how strict they are with allowing 9.9s to, to, to kind of infiltrate the, uh, the census. They don't want to do that. They were, in a way, controlling you know, uh, the values of these books. Making nine nine sorry, making nine point eight the the the, the go to for, for most every collector. So you just can't go and change that now all of a sudden. I just think it's an assholeish thing to do. It's it's just not a very nice thing to do to your to your do you have a, you've had clients with you for twenty something years and now you're gonna change that on them? I just think it's not very cool. I think it's just a not not a good mod but business model. That that would be enough to turn I won't say turn me away necessarily. I'm sending the books mostly for you guys. But uh, it, would, it would leave a very bad taste in my mouth. Look, I'm already, I already think it's disgusting that they charge me, they just charged me $199 US to be a dealer. Why? Why would you charge me $199 to be a dealer? I don't understand that. Is that, is that because you want to scare away people who are pretending to be dealers because there are lots of people all over that that have dealer status that aren't really dealers they just submit their own books and want that discount okay but i am a dealer i'm sending in four to five hundred comic books a month and you are charging me 200 us why that that to me is just low i think it's just a low a low thing to do i think it's just so yeah what do i know right if they could tell me why they're charging dealers, real dealers, that fee, because I, I never, as soon as they introduced that, I was very pissed off. I thought, what a slap in the face. And at that time, they reduced our um, our discount from 20% to 15. And oh, by the way, we're going to charge you guys a, a 200 bucks a, a year. Okay, whatever. I, I think it was gross, personally. That's not how you treat people that, that promote your business, but what do I know? Um, what standards? <laughs> Uh, Jive Tree, for 25 bucks, I'll evaluate the CVA valuations of their CGC valuations. Exactly, right? What's the point? Uh, Marco, on the bright side, maybe we can now end and rename the old modern era and finally start a new modern era. Yeah, you could do that, right? Brian says, is grading the contentious with is, is grading this contentious with sports cards, coin stamps, or the standards more established? Uh, I don't I don't grade them. I don't know. Um, I think with uh 
With cards, it can be a little contentious, I think, from what I hear from other people. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I just don't do enough of that. I don't, I don't deal enough with that, so I can't really, I can't really speak to it. Perhaps somebody there can. Do we do these ones? Oh no. Okay, here we go. More. Another nine point eight. Uh, spawn. See, I think we already did this book. But in case, I think we did this book already, but if not, there it is right there again. <laughs> I think we did that one already. That's a Canadian price variant, but there could be two of them in there. And we got Sam's favorite books here. I don't think Sam's here today, but we got a 9.8 copy of ASM 361 starting to make a resurgence. Been seeing this book a little bit more frequently. We also have a 9.6 to go along with that one. And if you recall last week, we had one with a big dent in the middle at a 9.8. I've got to send it back. That's See, that's still underway. That's got to go back to be reviewed. We have... Holy cow. Okay, here we got a Canadian price variant of Thor 337, the first Beta Ray build. Got a sick looking... This book looks great. I'm sorry. This book looks... This book's tied for me with... Marvel Secret Wars number eight with the custom label. I love this book, and you, it does. This doesn't do justice because it's the, the red and you know the, the glistening of the the metallic cover. It looks maybe this way. I don't know. It looks awesome. I love it. It's a great looking book. It's a great looking slab. Yeah, some of those uh, some of those custom labels I, I am starting to really like. Okay, we got a nine point six copy of uh, Canadian Price variant of ASM two fifty two. We have another copy, of, well, not another, we have a copy of Spectacular Spider-Man number one. We don't see this one too, too often. And a 9.2. Another one. Another one. I'll put some of these away. I'll go back to the chat real quick as I do that. The postmodern era, yeah, you could do that. Marco says that too. A Ranger for Collectors. Uh, Comic Cave Canada sent in 50 Freddy Krueger number one. CGC sent the message. They can't give them all 9.8. So he got 25, 98, and 20 and 96 of the book. Okay. What well, did they say why they couldn't give them all 9.8s? Because they were not 9.8s or because they just didn't want to give him 9.8s? Nucky Futt says, since you're a presser, did you see the guy on YouTube improve collecting comics, turning an 8 ASM to a 9? Says, does it say yes? Okay. Yes, I did see that one, I believe. Are you, was it ASM 129 or was it a Hulk 181? Because I saw that as well. Okay. <clears throat> Nucky Futz brings up a good thing. Yeah, there are dudes out there that are pressing books. Uh, and doing other things to the books <laughs> to get them to these high grades. The challenge with that is they're oftentimes either watching the covers or they're using B led, you know, B led technology to brighten the covers. The only problem with that is you run the risk of getting either a conserved label or a purple cons uh, restored label. But sometimes, sometimes you do get blue. And I, I've seen that happen. So, you know, if I had a client come into me and say, now, by the way, we're not offering that yet. We're not really doing, we, we have this, we have the technology and we're playing with it. We're doing some stuff, but we're not really offering it yet. But you have to let the customer know that, okay, I'm taking your ASM 129 8.0 and I'm going to do this to the book and it's going to make the book look so much better. But if CGC thinks, the greater thinks the book has been doctored in any way, there is a chance, a chance that you may get a conserved label or a restored label. Are you okay with that? And if you're okay with that and you sign off on that, then yeah, go for it. Um, it's not rocket science, really. It's just, again, you got to know when to say, it's like, it's like Kenny Rogers says, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? Know when to walk away, know when to run. You got to know when to stop, you know, because that B-lead is a little, uh, some guys get a little happy with the B-lead. And they turn these books 
Like they'll take a book like this Thor here and they'll make it so white. It just looks so unnatural. Um, anybody, anybody with half who has any experience with comics will know that the book has been, you know, been worked on. So yeah, it's pretty amazing some of the stuff that you can you can do for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, but that being said, knocking futs. There was a time I did take a book for. Uh, for Chris M, I remember, this is going back several years, he brought me a 7.5 ASM 129. A 7.5, and I pressed it to a 9... 9294? I can't remember exactly. But it's on my Instagram. If you scroll right back, it's on my Instagram. And there was no B-lead or, or washing. I just dry cleaned the sucker and pressed it really well. And he got... It went up... He was, he, was, he was crazy. He couldn't believe how high the book had gone up. So, yeah, if the book has the right problems without doing all... And I'll be honest, I'd prefer not to wash a cover. I prefer not to put B-Lead to a cover. I, I don't like doing it, but customers are now asking for it. So I am, you know, I'm getting ready to, to do that. If, you know, people want me to do it, we'll do it. As long as they know the risks that are involved in doing so, right? That's all there is to it. Like when you wash a cover, if you take a, a 1968 Spider-Man book and you wash the cover, it's going to look a million times better. But but there are some clues left behind that will show again uh, a seasoned and even, yeah a seasoned collector that something's not quite right here. It, it's something something's been changed with the book, right? And some graders seem to be okay with that. And other graders are not. So it's luck of the draw, right? We'll talk about that way in the future. Okay, let's keep going here. All right. So we got another. Let's go back here. We got, an, we got another 9.8 Venom. I'm not going to show that one off. And we also have another Spawn 9.8. So we'll get three Spawns, three or four Venoms. We also have a Secret Wars, another Secret Wars. This one's a Canadian, or no, it's a newsstand copy right here. We also have, holy jeez, man. How many, oh my Lord, look at this. Anybody want to buy a Venom number one? Jumping Josephine, look at this. <laughs> and last but not least, we got a 5.0. Have not seen any copies of this today. It's a lower grade one, but still an ASM 300 nonetheless. 5.0 ASM 300, which is the first appearance of Venom. Not bad. If I can get it on there, right there. There you go. Two and a half boxes, guys. And thanks to Bart. I know it sucks, Bart. Your books are with me here. They're nice books to share, though. Full set of Dark Knight. Can't can't go wrong with that. Uh, was it three to the four? Or two to four were nine eight? Or three to four were nine eight? No, nine eight, nine eight, nine six, and nine two, if I remember correctly. And a couple of old, or that nice old Batman book, which I really like too. So nice to show off your books here. I'll get those to you. I'll contact them tomorrow. You know the routine. Let's see if you guys are saying anything else before I let you all go. Um, A Ranger 4 collector says it will bring down the census. Knocking Futz says ASM 129. Peter, people are using blue LED on books that are already in the slab to improve appearance. In the slab? Don't think it would do anything. Don't think it would do anything. For I'm going to tell you right now, guys. For blue LED to work proper or to work really, really good, you need a bleaching agent. You need a bleaching agent. And I'm not talking about bleach, like, you know, the kind of bleach you use with uh, with um, with your clothes. Believe it or not, distilled water can be a bleach, a bleaching agent. But you do need a bleaching agent to uh, to get the bee lead to really to really work. And and um, yeah, that, that's all I'm gonna say. But again, the thing is, the thing is, is your eye. It, you have to know how far to go, how you don't want a book to look unnatural. Even when we press books, sometimes I say stop because I don't want the book to look squashed. I don't want the book to look obviously pressed. 
Um, you know, you, you got to know, you got to know when to call it. Right. And, and a lot of guys just, they just go too far. They get, they get happy with the bee lead. Oh my God, look how white it's getting. And they keep, they keep bleaching it, bleaching it, bleaching it, bleaching it to the point where it's so brilliant white that when you open it up and the pages are all, excuse me, yellow inside, it looks just totally unnatural. And it's obvious the book has been, been played with. Right. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Um, uh, what the heck's going on here? Okay. Nucking says, I guess he bought an ASM-8 and said by looking at it, he thought he had a great opportunity to get a great bump. And that's that's fine. Like, for example, I mentioned Peter brought in that ASM-194 on Saturday. It's a 6.5. I think that book's going to jump to... An, to I don't want to jinx it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go up at least two, maybe three. Like, it's going to... I said low nines even. It's gorgeous. Now, I haven't taken it out of the slab yet. Once I take it out of the slab, I can know for sure. But there are a couple of dents and dings on there that are going to come out for sure. And it, I think it was undergraded. I think the book's going to really pop. So, yeah, it happens. You know, it happens. Some, sometimes it's, you don't have to do any of that, you know, that modern uh, bleaching and all that kind of stuff. I, I've always been anti that. You know, I guess working with Nippur, it's kind of made me a little more open to it. Like she showed me how to wash the stuff you know, properly, with the proper pHs and all that stuff and use the proper setup. And how to be very careful with the paper as you're, as you're, as you're washing it. It's, it's, a very, it's a very delicate, um, slow process, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I've seen guys do it so rough, you know. I'm like, what the hell are you going to do? But, but she showed me how to do it and, and, and it's kind of opened my eyes to it a little more. So I'm a little more open to it. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, CGC slabs are not UV safe. They are not. They, they, they say that they're not UV safe. So if you put your CGC slab near natural light, it's going to fade. It's going to fade. B-Lead whitens the whites, but also lightens the other colors. Not good in my opinion. It seems to brighten them, but then I think if you do overdo it, it will dull them. It will. Uh, Dave House, B-Lead, I think it's the only solution to foxing and it spreads so it may, need to, <clears throat> it may be needed in order to preserve the book long term. What else can you do? It, it works uh, again. It's not the light that's doing that, Dave. Necessarily, it's it's the bleaching agents you're using. The light expedites it. The, the light reacts with that stuff, right? But yeah, the same thing. It works actually on old toys too. If you've got old plastic, the yellow, if you have the old star, you know, the old yellow stormtrooper, you know, from the 70s, and his legs or arms are yellow. If you spray that with some some peroxide and throw it under B lead, or even to put it outside in the sunlight, it will actually it'll go white. So yeah, Marco public service has been, don't bleach your books in Javix. No, don't do that. That would be very, very bad. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for popping by today for this unboxing. Listen, if you're new here again, I sure hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I have a lot of great interviews coming up in the upcoming week, so uh, you can be a part of that as well. Remember, tomorrow, uh, Brian from Toy Ventures is going to be here. We're going to be talking about the best comic book how can I say comic book characters uh, in toys? You know what I mean? The best comic book characters as translated into toys. So yeah, um, you, you're not going to want to miss it. So we're going to be talking about, of course, 1970s Migos and probably Kenner toys. If you played with any of those when you're a kid, you're going to want to pop by and watch as Brian again is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I, I think you're really going to like it. And those one-on-one -on -one shows are probably going to be about 30 40 50 minutes long i'm trying to keep them under an hour so hope you can join us tomorrow night uh and yeah i'll be back again next tuesday there are books on the way and if they're not mine they're probably someone else's like from their, they're supposed to go to the states no i'm just joking i hope uh more boxes on their way from the cgc right now i checked this afternoon so until next uh, until tomorrow my friends take care have a fantastic night as i try to find my end thumbnail there it is all the best bye for now